Like every good video on the internet, this video is about cats, but instead of having four legs, these have four pairs of twisted cables, which is much more exciting. Without going too far into the history of the humble ethernet cable, let's talk about what those cats mean in terms of cat four, five, six, and <clears throat> cat seven. Cat is short for category and is an industry standard. The most common cables today are still Cat5 and Cat5e. Cat5 operates in a 100 megahertz band with four pairs of twisted cables and can deliver speeds up to 100 megabits per second. Cat5e improves on this by better shielding and better technology to allow speeds up to one gigabit per second. And that one gigabit per second is at full duplex, which means you can send one gigabit per second and receive it at the same time. It achieves this by having much stricter specifications on crosstalk, which means the cables can't talk to each other as much and get the information jumbled up. Cat6 can go even faster with speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second and is quickly becoming an industry standard. This is achieved by, again, stricter uh, specifications on crosstalk, twisting the cables in pairs and having thicker cables and making sure that all switches, connectors, plugs, cables, everything is at the Cat6 standard. And that's how it can achieve those speeds. But at the same time, being backwards compatible all the way back to Cat3. Cat 6A also has speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, but over a longer distance, up to 100 meters versus Cat 6 standard, which is 55 meters. Because of the requirement for twisted cables and extra shielding in Cat 6, you will never be able to purchase a flat Cat 6 or Cat 6A cables. I know there are some listings for flat Cat 6 cables, but they're all fake. Speaking of fake, that brings us to Cat 7. All of the specifications for CAT cable are set by the Telecommunications Industry Association, or TIA, TIA, except for one, CAT7. CAT7 sort of existed briefly. It can reach speeds of 10 gigabit per second, just like CAT6 and CAT6A, but requires a ton of extra shielding and requires not only the entire group of cables to be shielded, but each individual pair to be shielded. On top of that, CAT7 has to be grounded to the connector on both ends of the cable, as well as being grounded to the socket that it's connected to. So with all of that extra shielding and grounding, performance must be exponentially better, right? Well, no. It still has the same performance of CAT6, and if you want to take advantage of all that extra shielding and grounding and potential performance, it requires a special connection called Terra, T-E-R-A, and is not compatible with the standard RJ45 socket. CAT7 can be terminated to a 8P, 8C, or RJ45 socket, but it cannot be shielded at both ends, so it loses all of the benefit that that extra shielding gave it. Well, okay, but I still want to use CAT7, so I can just upgrade all of my equipment to have stuff with Terra ports on it, right? Unfortunately, no. The industry decided not to adopt the Terra port in favor for the traditional RJ45 socket. So there is actually no consumer or prosumer hardware available with a Terra connection. There's only a handful of companies supplying Terra hardware, and these are usually for huge campuses or data centers. You'd have to have some very specific use case for having Terra hardware, perhaps like a government security security organization or something like that. So for consumers like you and me, all the way up to big business, Cat7 offers no benefit over Cat6A, and Cat7 with an RJ45 connection, it's just Cat6A anyway. So if you are looking to buy some cables, save yourself some money and buy Cat6 or Cat6A. And until next time, keep playing. So think of it like this. There is no Cat7. It is only yourself that gets faster.